I have been speaking for a while now with Red, our new chief engineer. We couldn't pronounce his actual name, so with his approval, we settled on the colour he always seemed to wear. You couldn't miss him with his bright red safety clothing. He was from that new death world that everybody seemed to talk about lately. We didn't even know why he was chosen. There were cheaper options, and we desperately needed a new chief engineer after, well, poor Gerson passed away. So naturally everybody was a little on edge around him, but our captain's progressive thinking turned out to be wonderful. Because he not only doubled the efficiency of nearly half the ship's systems, he turned out to be so nice too. He is polite, reserved, helpful, and has such great humour. Everybody seemed to like that gentle giant. Furthermore, finally there was somebody who was interested in our work. We rarely change our crew, so we only see new people when we have passengers. Usually they can provide really deep and meaningful conversations about art, culture, philosophy and politics, but no one seems to care about our passion. So once people decided that Red meant no harm, they jumped on the opportunity to show him around and tell him all about their work on the ship that they love so much. That day though, I had a great idea. He too talked enthusiastically about his engineering work, but he didn't invite us to his workshop yet, so I was going to surprise him with a visit. I though, if he didn't have time to chat or show things around, I could still give him a welcome present. He mentioned he loves to listen to music while he's working alone, so I can pass on my favourites. Maybe I could even hear some of his music, I thought. I finally arrived at his two doors. As chief engineer, he got two separate rooms. One was his personal cabin, the other was a workshop that he could fill with any equipment he deemed necessary. He often complained how different and weird our technology was to him, so I thought maybe I could get to see what led to those improvements on the ship. However, the doors were much different from when I had last been around this part of the ship. They were lined with black and orange stripes and had bright pictograms and writing painted on them. Both of them included Danger, High Gravity, Don't Cross Safety Line, Three Times Standard, Dry Heat, 293 Kelvin. And on the workshop door, this got supplemented with High Noise, up to 110 decibel. High intensity electromagnetic radiation, 200 nm to 1400 nm. If the safety light is flashing, do not open the door. I started to question whether or not this was a good idea, but if the danger light wasn't flashing, and my species can live in 293k, it shouldn't be too bad. I pulled the lever to open the door, and the metal slab started to separate in front of me. Immediately, I got hit in the face with the heat of a hot summer and the smell of oil. Inside I saw strange, crude-looking, grimy machines, weird tools on the walls, gas canisters, and the red safety line a few steps from the entrance. I couldn't see red anywhere, so I put my head in. I heard some shuffling from to the right, behind a folding screen. Something started hissing, and with a loud pop, bright light appeared behind the screen. I was frozen in place by sheer terror. A 40 canister got set ablaze. In a matter of seconds, the cabin would blow, damaging the rest, and the conflagration would push the corridor. I've seen it twice before getting on this ship. They even taught it in school how to try to prevent this. Boom. But I was alive. The light was still emitting from behind the folding screen and the sound came from a speaker on the wall. It took a second to process that the boom, which sounded more like a high powered electrical arc, was followed by the sound of some instrument. Then two second booms. It had rhythm. A set of drums joined to provide a beat along with sharp metallic clanking. The booms got elongated and rapidly shifted pitch. It was deafening. It was terrifying. It sounded crude, but nonetheless, it was music. This was human music? Maybe the speaker was faulty, or our hearing is more different than we thought. Then suddenly somebody spoke. It also came from the speakers. A deep, guttural, harsh, angry voice in a language I could not understand. I realised it must have been the human language. Red spoke galactic standard with the same accent. He didn't speak. He stretched his words to match the speed and tone of the music. He did what only a few species did. He sang. My translator kicked in. We had to carry it for those who did not speak fluently yet, or were incapable of pronouncing standard. I heard the monotone translation in my ear, a few seconds late to the actual lyrics. I am standing alone, and I am looking at the battlefield. After the fight, all that is left is wasteland. And now I am searching for a new method to defeat my enemy. Bloodshed. Translation. The killing or wounding of people, typically on a large scale during a conflict. I have seen enough amounts of death and pain. I will run. They will hunt me to no avail. I will hide. They will be searching for me. I will regroup my people. I will act like I am retreating. They will pursue me. 
coup de gras. Translation, a final blow or shot given to kill a wounded person or animal. I will win, but never fight. A slender figure appeared from behind the folding screen. I didn't even notice the light ceased. It was red, but without the plus insulation underneath. His clothes seemed unusually baggy. He wore some kind of mask with the most terrifying image painted on it I have ever seen. Glowing blue eyes above enormous bared teeth. As he exited, I heard him shout louder than the music and sing the recording. He saw me and froze in place. I ran for my life as the translator finally finished with the last sentence. That is the art of war.